let's listen to Tim Mackey. Some of what Tim says is fantastic. Very, very, very well explained and illustrated. Some of what he says, I agree with wholeheartedly. Then there are other things that he says that amputates core doctrine out of the Bible, and it frustrates me. <laughs> and I won't talk about that today. So, so what I'm saying is the story of the Bible is the story about how heaven and earth got ripped apart and that that was not God's will. That's something about that happened in the story that went wrong, right? So God, God wants to partner and rule his good world together with these dignified, image-bearing human beings. And as, you know, you saw in the funny scene right there, that, that goes wrong, not because something was wrong in the way God set up the deal, it's because something went wrong inside of human beings, right? There's this, this urge, this urge to not trust God's definition of good and evil and, to, and to, to seize autonomy and independence and to define good and evil as I see fit and define it for, for ourselves. And I would agree with that. I like the things that he says, like the Bible is one unified story, albeit there's a lot of moving pieces in it, and there's a lot of different things happening with different books. There's historical, there's prophetic, there's there's so much. There's There's no other book in the world like the Bible. And you can throw in types. And, and, and uh, anti-types uh, as a hermeneutic for understanding things. Th there's so much going on with the Bible, but it is one unified book in and of itself, and it has to be properly divided. And that is a chore in and of itself. And there are layers and layers and layers to the Bible. And it is probably because it was written by God, bottomless. I'm, I'm guessing it is completely bottomless. So it, you will always come to it with the Holy Spirit giving you a fresh new understanding that ties in with core doctrine. It's a good way to put it. Nothing weird. One of the things that I like that Tim does, and he was showing you back here in some videos that he did, is that once upon a time, heaven and earth were connected. That's, that's what the Garden of Eden was. Heaven and earth. And in God's good world, he made Adam and he made this living, breathing, forever soul, forever. Just like God is forever, so did God make Adam the proto of the blueprint master of all the DNA that would ever be produced for the next generation and so on and so forth. Forever souls, because God is forever. And that was what he used when he made Adam soul. Psyche. He housed that forever soul in a body that could be temporal or it had the potential for potentially, again, potential, <laughs> being eternal. And that body is a temple that houses that soul forever and houses what is called the spirit, or Paul calls it spirit man, spirit mankind. And the Holy Spirit, when he made Adam and then Eve from Adam, he was inside of that temple body. That's what a temple is. It has God on the inside. And so Adam was a living, walking, breathing, talking temple for the Holy Spirit in total union with God, while at the same time, Adam and Eve were also walking around in the cool of the day with Jesus. Where's the Father? The Father is where the Father always is, in heaven, on a throne, observing and whatever God does. So you have an ecod, the, the, the Godhead, God ruler, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit interacting with mankind and literally housing within Adam and Eve. But God is about choice and God allows 
for this other shady character who is not an ecod. He's just a spirit that's a bad spirit. He's a bad angel that rejected God and turned from him. And this spirit comes in the form of this serpenty, shining, reptilian esque something, something, Nakash. And he is allowed to offer choice because God's not into slavery. God's into choice to our parents. And the day that they ate of that fruit of disobedience, because they thought there was something that God maybe was holding out on them, right? Like there was more access to hidden knowledge to become something more than they were not really fully appreciating that they were already at the height of what they had. And so they were, they spiritually damned themselves, which means that the Holy Spirit that had been inside of their temples now left and they got kicked out of the garden. And this is kind of where he's, he's not explaining it quite that well, but he's explaining that there was this ripping apart that happens between heaven and earth. These, these two places between God, Yahweh and humanity. But I would tell you that if you just focus on the externality of the land location, you're missing a big chunk of the puzzle. You're, you're supposed to deduce that heaven and earth had also, that, that God and man's dwelling had also started out as one in Adam's temple. I'm not saying that Adam was God. I'm not saying that. I'm saying God made Adam and was an integral part of the interior design of a temple. And the idea was blessing. And the idea is that God is good. God always follows what is good. God is the purveyor of all good. And that Adam and Eve were supposed to image copy God, right? So as God does good, so does man do good. It was until that moment where they told God, no. And Lucifer, yes, Lucifer became the God of this world, 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. And the Holy Spirit, who is not into slavery, but is into freedom, left their temples. That is spiritual death. So remember when they were told that in the day that you eat of that fruit, you shall die. And many people have said, why didn't they physically die? Because God wasn't talking about physical death in that moment. There was a death that day in the garden that people should understand was a separation of the Holy Spirit inside the temple of man who then exited. So you also have man being open up to this possibility of choosing evil. God is not going to be a part of that. God can't be a part of that. It's the opposite of God. And so the consequence is the separation from God on the inside. And you can look at it as kind of a temporary separation. So now you have free will moral agents that taste, test evil by thoughts, by words, and by deeds. And for Satan to pollute the well right there at the first proto, the first blueprint of mankind with Adam and Eve, so would all of their children now be in this position of being born two thirds, not three thirds. Your spirit would be born dead. That's what happened when, when the Holy Spirit left Adam and Eve, their spirits died. Your spirit has to do with your communication and connection to God to even understand the things that are spiritual. Paul talked about, do you need the spirit of God? It's like when you plug a lamp in the little prongs on the electrical cord, push into the correct electrical outlet. So you have a connection. That's how it was supposed to be. God in the inside of the temple in, in Adam and Eve and all of their children and God's good plan when heaven and earth kissed. And when they were one inside and outside of Adam and Eve, it was to bring about blessing until Adam and Eve said no. And they decided to doubt God, 
which was an act of evil. Unbelief, disbelief of God is huge evil. People try to make it not a big deal. It's a big deal. It's a really big deal. So as a consequence of God separating himself from man, Adam fell from this position of rulership. And who took up that rulership? The nightmare, Lucifer. Jesus calls him the prince of the power of the air, the prince of darkness. Many other titles that Paul says he's the God of this world. Second Corinthians 4, 4, we talked about that. All of these things have to do with an authority that has been usurped. Authority is a big concept in the Bible. It's really important. Authority. And so this is why you have this train wreck of 6,000 years worth of suffering and pain and torture. And as we all choose evil, we contribute to it. And the byproduct of being spiritually separated from God temporarily, potentially, this spiritual damnation, is that your body will also die because your body was supposed to have God inside of it with your spirit alive. But little by little and bit by bit, we age, right? Your body, that was not the original design of your body to age, but that's the byproduct of what happened in the garden that day with Adam and Eve. And so eventually their bodies died and that's another separation. Death is separation, not non-existence. People that start off with that premise are wrong from the get-go. Death is separation. So what is bodily death? Bodily death is when your forever soul made by forever God in the garden in Genesis 2, starting there and then being passed on to all the rest of the children of Adam in Genesis 4, the first birth was a murderer. It's when your soul forever separates out of your temple. That's what death is. And then your soul goes to heaven or hell. I don't want to talk about paradise and all that stuff and confuse people right now. You're either with God or you're not with God, right? But that's not the end. There's still so much more. There is a Gehenna for those who re stay, at, well, who have rejected God. So from hell to Gehenna, the lake of fire, or if you have been born again, even if your body did temporarily die, you will be with God forever in a new heaven and a new earth. And he does a decent job of helping you understand that reunion of heaven and earth. His hell is funky. We're going to talk about that in another video in a little bit. But he is good about showing how from Genesis there was a heaven and earth together. I already explained how God was in your temple you need to be born again, which means you get the Holy Spirit back in your temple through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus at repentance through faith and grace. And then you read the end of the Bible in, Gen in Revelation, rather, 21, and you see the co-mingling together of all the redeemed of humanity that are back with a new heaven and a new earth together. And it, uh, I forget exactly how the language is, but uh, John marveled for there was no there was no temple. And it says that uh, I'll have to look that scripture up. The, the lamb is our temple. So we don't need temples anymore. The goal has been achieved. This union of heaven and earth, man and God together, dwelling together, no longer needs a temple. Goal achieved is what's happening. It's bookended. And so I like what he says here. About the happened in the story that went wrong, right? So God, God wants to partner and rule his good world together with these dignified, image-bearing human beings. And as, you know, you saw in the funny scene right there, that, that goes wrong. Not because something was wrong in the way God set up the deal. It's because something went wrong inside of human beings, right? There's this, this urge this urge to not trust God's definition of good and evil and, to, and to, to seize autonomy and independence and to define good and evil as I see fit 
and define it for, for ourselves. And here's what's crucially important, and this is a very simple way to think about communicating this, and, and why this story is wrong. If you look at the first sentence of the Bible, it says, in the beginning, God made heavens and what does it not say? So we'll do a part two on where he's going next because we're going to attack that like a bulldog for uh, the deconstructionist of uh, what he's doing here with the concept of hell. But we have a good grasp now on why man is the way he is in evil. And not everybody gets reborn again and has the Holy Spirit go back in their temple. Not everybody is going to be living in a foreverness with God. 